Yes, the beginning starts when we're born. Yes, that is a beginning. But a beginning is when we start something new. If you decide to take up watercolour painting and you've never done it before, that's a new start. When your client decides to start looking after their health, that's a new start. That's the beginning. And we want to be there at the beginning to support them and to help them achieve what they want to achieve. And that is their well health, their improvement in health and overcoming whatever it is they're coming to see us for. And as a side effect, we're going to help lots of other people along the way because they know other people, they work with other people, they eat with other people. And so they'll be sharing the knowledge that we impart to them, whether it be in person, on social media, from our blogs, our podcasts, whichever way it is that you're reaching your people. Welcome to September and in the Facebook group Strictly Education and Support, we're currently involved in the Get Sorted September Challenge. Why don't you come over and join us? As long as you join before the 20th, then you'll be in it to win it. There's a challenge tracker and if you win on the challenge tracker, then you'll win a one-to-one with me. So maybe, just maybe, I'll see you over in the group and I'll see you on the challenge. For now, you enjoy the podcast and hope to see you soon. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners responding directly to the needs of a practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business, something clinical, you'll get the variety you need to enjoy and stay motivated in practice. So thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for our episodes. If you'd like more support, get in contact and I look forward to working with you soon. Hello. So today I want to talk to you. This all starts with you. Being a natural therapist starts with you because we help the world, right? I often say, you've probably heard me say, that we start with one person, but that one person affects so many people. No person is an island. And that is us as well. No, We are not an island. And we naturally share with our family and our friends. You go out to dinner, you'll take something that's healthy, perhaps, or you might choose not to and then explain why when you get there. There's all of the things about us that we share. And then we share those things with our clients as well. So often we feel that we're not really making an impact. We can feel that we haven't achieved anything. Our client comes back and, oh yeah, they're feeling a little bit better and But the simple fact is that little bit better, that might be a mother with several children and she's cooking all the meals. By her feeling a little better, she has more energy. She shares that energy with her family members. She's able to look after her children more productively if that's her role in the family. Maybe it's a father, a man, and he's the one who is the main carer of the children and he's feeling a little better. That means that little better knocks on to other things that are going on in their lives. That little better might be the difference between takeaway for tea and cooking those beautiful leafy greens and all the vegetables and giving the kids fruit and so impacting their health as well. As we share our knowledge with one person or on social media, a hundred people, or you might think I've got such a small following, I've only got 90 people following me or I've only got 500 people following me. It doesn't matter. What matters is you impact those people. Sometimes it's better to have a smaller following because they might be more engaged than a larger following. So we really have to think about how we engage with people and what we do with them and how we affect them overall in their lives. So the other thing about with our clients, how long are you spending with your client? Are you spending long enough? Are you spending too long? So I had a meeting, I've got a number of groups, as you probably know, and one of them is the Next Level group. And we meet on a Monday, lunchtime, and it goes on as long as it needs to. And we talk about everyone's clients. We talk about their business. We talk about, they ask questions about clients. They ask all of the questions around their business. And one of the questions from someone in the graduate mastery program because they just come on earlier on the Monday so they can share their clinical or business questions. And her question or what she said was, I'm not sure that my intake form is right because it meant that my consult was only half an hour. I said, well, how long is your intake form? It probably, what did you find was wrong with it? She said, well, because it was so comprehensive, 
I had loads of the answers, so I was only really clarifying things. I said, how do you feel overall, apart from the fact it was half an hour? How do you feel it went, the consult? Do you feel that you gained rapport while you were speaking to the person? Because that's where it starts with you. Did you create that rapport? That person is going to come back. That person has taken that knowledge from you. By having a comprehensive intake form, she's managed to avoid asking lots of extraneous questions that she doesn't need. She can hone in on what she needs to ask. And that client would hopefully feel that practitioner really understands them and has a good grasp on what's going on with them. We don't want to spend an hour and a half with our practitioner answering questions that aren't necessarily relevant. Because if we're exhausted at the end of it, we won't have that same rapport that we would have if we had half an hour of really quality time with that practitioner to learn what we needed to learn, to go through what needs to be gotten through. So we're rewriting this person's future. We're rewriting this person's children's future by changing their life, by giving them more energy, by helping them with their chronic illness, by helping their long COVID, whatever it is that's wrong with them. If we're helping them with health and lifestyle improvements, then we are helping them very much long term if we're helping them to change. But all change takes time. Nothing happens overnight, does it? I don't know about you, but changing is not that easy. It took me a long time to quit some of my bad habits. It took me a long time to really feel that I don't need sugar, okay? It took my body a long time to change as it changes, and I'm noticing changes as I get older. I like to say I'm only 30, but I might have to admit that I am aging slightly, and I might just have to admit that. But I can make sure with that aging that I'm doing all the right things for my body, that I'm taking all those polyphenols as foods, not as supplements. I do take supplements, obviously, because like all of us, we get them cheaper. So as I said to my client, was it yesterday or the day before, I was talking to one of my clients and I picked up my drink, which many of you will have seen. It's actually empty, so I can't show anyone watching on YouTube, but it's normally this deep purple color. And she's like, what is in that? She says, it's a smoothie. It's too runny to be a smoothie. I was like, no, it's not a smoothie. I said, it's supplements. And I said, basically, this is tenable if what goes into this drink, if you were anybody else, basically. There's lots of things that, there's a couple of things I really need. And there's a number of things that I'm just using up because they're sitting around in my office. There's things in here that I'm adding because I'm post-COVID. All of the things and far too many things. I don't need this many things in this bottle. And she was like, oh, I've recommended you have three things. And that is actually enough for you. And we had a really good laugh. At the end of the consult, I said, you're doing really well. I probably don't need to see you for, I don't know. She went, oh, how long? Five, six weeks? We've gained most of what we need to gain. And she said, oh, it's really good when I speak to you because I think it really keeps me on track. Okay, four weeks it is. I will see you in a month. And I'm like, oh, great. And that's what we want with our clients, isn't it? We want that rapport that we want them coming back. We want them to want to come back. And for them to know that this is an ongoing relationship of care, that this is supporting them to change, for their family to change. She speaks to me about the children, the husband. We've had discussions about all sorts of things that affect them as a family. And so that's what we want, this therapeutic relationship that's going to support change in our clients. And it takes time to change. I can't change anything about me overnight whether I can change my hair in a couple of hours, I can go to the hairdresser. But getting it back to long hair, I used to have long brown hair, that's clearly not going to happen again, is it? But even long hair is still going to take a long time. So if we think of change as being growing hair, then we can remember it takes a long time to have a full head of hair down your back and it's going to possibly take that long to make these overall changes, these total future changes that start with us, that start as natural therapist caring for our client, sharing that information and for them to take those steps. So when somebody is unwell, when somebody is exhausted, it's going to be really hard for them to cook amazing nutritious meals for themselves and for the whole family. So we have to think of ways to get those foods into them. It might be that they're buying sort of a, not where well, you can get, certainly get some really amazing ready meals cooked that you heat up in the oven. You can certainly get lots of those. We have a wonderful one here in Adelaide. But there's also those the sort of meal kits where it's all in there and you're just chopping it up and cooking it. So you're getting a fresh meal. 
And these are options for people who are exhausted that will still give them the nutrients they need. Sometimes they're a little bit lacking, I found, in protein and vegetables, but they're not too bad when you're exhausted and you're trying to make these changes or you want to keep these changes going. When I start with my clients, I start with one meal. I get them to choose one meal they're willing to change. If I look at the, because I get everyone to do a diet diary after the first appointment so that I can see what they're eating. And I always do a 24 hour meal diet recall so that I know whether or not I have to keep following up the seven day diet. And when I look at that it might be I look at it and lunch is not so crash hot, but dinner's okay. So then we work, will you have leftovers the next day? How can we get you making a really nutritious dinner to take over so that you've got a nutritious lunch going on as well? Maybe it's a terrible breakfast. So how can we get a really good breakfast going on here? What ways, what systems can we use that don't use up all your energy, don't use up all your time? And they're ready to go like birch and muesli you can make on Sunday and eat all week or whatever it is. We really need to think about change with our clients, the time that we spend with them as a really positive input and that we don't wear them out and that when we see them, it's really constructive because we've got this change happening with our client. They want this change. That's why they've come to see you and you want to see them succeed. And people think, I failed, I couldn't do it. You often get that. You ask somebody to follow a particular diet or they're giving up smoking or something. So, oh, I did it and then blah, blah happened and so I had another cigarette or I ate the chocolate bar or it was a birthday party, I couldn't do anything about it, I had the piece of chocolate cake and then I just thought, oh, I've messed it all up, I'll have another piece. So that's when that therapeutic relationship is there because we want to be able to change them in an ongoing basis. Personally now, I struggle to eat a slice of birthday cake because I really don't eat sugar. So I find things very sweet. I will eat enough. I would eat a piece if handed to me though, but I would never go back for a second one. And anything that's really sweet, just hide or feed to the pot plant or something. No, of course I wouldn't at a party. But you know what I mean. Just because I've had that piece of cake, the next day I'm not going to go and have another piece of cake, but lots of people will. They have to understand it's okay to eat the cake. And to stop again the next day, you're at a birthday party. It's a different behavioral time. You're not ruining your entire life if you work on an 80-20 system. It means that we will still have these health changes, these ongoing health changes. It means that we get enough time with them on a repetitive basis so that we can support that change so that where they have that stumbling block, I really can't eat onion, but I really love onion. What am I supposed to do? I'll eat leeks. We are the helper there to swap those foods out. We can think of the other meals. I can't have white flour. What am I supposed to do? I've been told I'm a celiac. Well, look at all these other options. Bread isn't the be all and end all. It probably is and that lots of people like it, but I have hardly any bread and it is okay. It's not okay when you can't do it. I think that's probably it, isn't it? It's not okay when you're told you can't do something, whereas when you don't want to do something, it's much easier. And that's the hard thing with change is you need that support through the, you can't smoke, don't smoke. This is the worst thing you can do. And we've got to get them off the cigarettes without demonizing them and their behaviors and making that change, you know, getting everybody off the white bread, the whole world off the white bread. All of these things that we support our clients with change because we're affecting them, we're affecting their families, we're affecting all those people around them through change and through supporting them and having them come back to see us on a regular basis and working with their needs. We really need to meet our client where they are at now. We can't go in there, oh, your diet's terrible, here's your new diet plan, breakfast, lunch and dinner. It will become too much for them and they'll quit unless it's all arriving ready-made for them and they can just eat it or it's all arriving ready to go and there's very little for them to do. That change would work in the majority of cases, but is that them undertaking change? It will ultimately be changing their taste buds and their palate, which might mean that at the end of this extreme challenge time, maybe they've had everything delivered for a few months, they will then be thinking, oh, those are my normal foods. That's what I'll eat. I'll make those salads and I'll make those recipes that I had rather than going back to old ways. So We really need to meet our patients where they're at because it all starts with us and it all starts with them coming to us. 
being with us, seeing us as their clinician, as one of the multidisciplinary team that supports them in their well health. And yeah, that was today's. I just thought, let's really think that we are part of that start. We are there at the beginning because the beginning starts when a client is ready to start. Yes, the beginning starts when we're born. Yes, that is a beginning. But a beginning is when we start something new. If you decide to take up watercolour painting and you've never done it before, that's a new start. When your client decides to start looking after their health, that's a new start. That's the beginning. And we want to be there at the beginning to support them and to help them achieve what they want to achieve. And that is their well health, their improvement in health and overcoming whatever it is they're coming to see us for. And as a side effect, we're going to help lots of other people along the way because they know other people, they work with other people, they eat with other people. And so they'll be sharing the knowledge that we impart to them, whether it be in person, on social media, from our blogs, our podcasts, whichever way it is that you're reaching your people. So I'm going to leave it there today. I hope you have an absolutely brilliant day and I look forward to catching up with you really soon. Or maybe even on the next podcast, I hope you've pressed the subscribe button so that you know when the next one comes out. See ya. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.